making a rather unusual video today. Um, most of the people who follow what I do with steam trains or classic cars or scooters won't be interested in this, but I purchased one of these Drive Pro um, car camcorders some months ago and I'm not going too well with it. Uh, it's because I'm not fully understand how it operates or what you can do with it and what its limitations are. And yesterday I discovered a helpful YouTube video where someone actually powered it up in front of a camera and showed how things worked. And I was able to work through that and fully understand what all the various buttons on the back actually do. Um, you've got various connectors on the side and but on the back you've got this or four buttons. Now the biggest problem I have with it is that when it comes it doesn't come with any feature that you can operate it in the house. You can only fit it in your car and operate it when the engine is running and the ignition's on and there's a 12 volt supply to it which goes in on this little connector there. And in my car the windscreen is rather distant from the driver's seat and it's always been very difficult to see what's going on and to fully understand what all the various buttons allow me to do. It doesn't come with any feature that allows you to power it at home but by rummaging through all the various leads and adapters and things I have in the house um, I've come up with what I'll show you now. This is a lead I've got for my old cam camcorder, my Panasonic HS25 camcorder. It's got a USB connector there which you normally fit into the computer and this is what goes into the side of the camcorder, the video out. Now that is a larger size connector to what's fitted on recent Panasonic camcorders. I couldn't use this on my new camcorder because that's a different size plug to what's on the latest. But if you happen to have got one of these leads, this will do the job. Um, in the car, of course, you plug the power supply, which you've had to route around the side of your windscreen and down over the top by the mirror. And make sure, of course, which way you've got it in. That's it, now that's connected in there. Now of course this being a camcorder lead, there's no power supply in this normally. But I've come across it came with a mobile phone that's been disused. This device, I'll unplug it just to show you. Show it's off. Yeah, it's one of these funny things with a very slidable unused earth plug for the British system. But its output does come via USB. So I plug the other end of this cable into there. Again, I don't know if you've, if you've got one of these, you'll know that the quality of the picture is quite quite decent. It makes a good recording of the car. I would say the sound level in it is not that brilliant. In fact, today I've been able to adjust mine so that it's at its maximum strength. Um, a bad part of the design really is that that's the microphone there. There's tiny, those tiny little holes, but they're, of course, looking out of the windscreen, and you're speaking to it from this end of the camp of the unit, so your sound is not going directly into it. It's going to come over the back. It would be much better if that was designed to be on this on this face. Anyway, um, I'll just switch on the mains power unit. And run the set coming to life. Now that's what you'd see in your car once you pull it away and you've got your engine running. It's showing that it's recording there, that's showing the elapsed time since you started the recording. That's a te technical bit about the frames per second but it doesn't matter. That symbol shows that the microphone is active and that shows that there are currently no protected files out of a total of 15. You can protect a file if you particularly want to keep that particular recording. One of the other snags I had, somehow or other, it ended up with somewhere near the maximum protected files, probably because I didn't uh, realise I, I was protecting them by pressing the wrong buttons at the wrong settings. I didn't fully understand the, the settings. But as you can see, this is recording as soon as it's powered. Uh, perhaps normally you would have a, a camcorder with uh, not be recording until asked it to record, but as soon as you um, apply power, 
tripod ignition onto a thing like this it does go into recording mode right down here you see there are four buttons and what I've learned today is what they're all about um, let's just run through a part of it if I can that turns the whole thing on and off but you've got to press and hold it to make, to, to make it work right it's gone off um, put it back on again you notice the audio tone that's what you see when you switch it on in the car um, note that's flashing red as a backup to the recording red flashing red up there probably um, the least used one is this button here in this recording mode because depending on what mode you're in uh, these buttons do different things and you need to get to understand that and that's so difficult to do unless you've got a mains power unit like this well that turns on the Wi-Fi situation which allows you to do various um, monitor and setting changes via an iPad or if you've got a smartphone and you've downloaded the right app if I switch it on there nothing will happen other than that red flashing light will turn blue that's indicating that it's it's transmitting a Wi-Fi signal which your iPad or smartphone will be able to pick up anyway we're not dealing with that sort of things for the moment so I'll switch that back off this button here is a settings button um, once you've pressed that you've got a whole range of things here that you can set um, via the same four buttons um, that would allow you to select a particular thing for example resolution I always want the highest quality picture so 1080p is what I've selected and once you've done that you say okay that's what you want it will go down to exposure value okay again and I found the picture too light first of all when I had it in the car and so I've dimmed it down to minus one that darkens the picture a bit and I found that a better practical setting video length okay you've got a selection of one three or five minutes it doesn't make a continuous recording this recorder it makes little video files of either one three or five minutes length and if you have a one minute setting you've got I don't know 30 40 files on a short journey and it can be a bit irritating when you're looking for the files looking for a particular bit so I've taken the medium value at three minutes timestamp okay I've got disabled because this is another this is the most major drawback I find with this unit once you've got everything piled up in your car and you've and you've um, set your time which is another setting you do later it'll only hold that time according to the manual for a maximum of four days well I don't use my car within every four days and when I come to use it I find all the dates and, de and times are all wrong again and that gets very irritating as you see later to set them up it's it's a multi um, push button situation so rather than have wrong dates on my files I've disabled it so far well, I, I say I've disabled but I still seem to see time settings on things so I'm not fully understand um, what has been set, disabled because I still do see time settings anyway in theory that's good because it doesn't tell you the wrong date if it really does remove it and then going down we've got voice recording yes I want to make a re voice recording if you want to say something and have it recorded like I said earlier um, see I've got it enabled the microphone is not that sensitive and in my car the windscreen is quite some way from the driver because it's, it's quite a, a seat in a, a very relaxed situation um, I think I need to shout to really have it recorded properly I wish there was more gain on that Loop recording, that means that once you've uh, filled up the various files, the normal files, um, it goes back and records over some of the original files that were some time ago. 
and I've enabled that. Otherwise, it'll just fill the card up and stop recording. This is the volume I was talking. I've got it on maximum three. G Center. This is if you've got an accident, uh, rather than uh, uh, press a protected button there, which means that you really want that file safe and be protected. This will automatically do that for you. Um, I've yet to understand if it means low or high sensitivity. Um, the other video on YouTube I was watching indicated that that's the best setting. But it could be that is the lowest sensitivity. So we'll we'll see as things go on what, what, what I set it to eventually. And you go on down. There's so many things. Also turn off display. That would allow you to turn off the display as the car is travelling along. Well, I'd rather have the confirmation that it's it's recording because as you go along, you see a little picture of, of what the camera is recording. It's too small to be of much use other than to say, oh, I am recording something because it's quite a small display when you're sitting three feet away from it. Date and time. Oh, that was never, never um, turn it off. OK, let me come down to date and time settings. Then normally I would go out into the car, get the engine running, and up would come that picture. And all the settings would be wrong. The year would be wrong, the month would be wrong, the date would be wrong, the hour, the minute, and the second, all wrong. And you'd have to go through setting up each one of those to the current values. Well, I found that very irritating. I suspect uh, it, it'll still happen because I'm not using the car every day. Unfortunately, the manufacturers didn't fit a, a little battery in here which would restore the clock um, facility. It runs off a small capacitor which only just charges up and runs very, very briefly. It's just not good enough for the job. It wants a separate battery that you change every six months. Anyway, when that comes on, you can't really record anything until all that's been corrected. And the only way to do it is, is to run through it all. OK, 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 and then it's gone out of the way. That's the way of which shape you put. You want to put your um, settings, either in year, month and date, or in 24 hour terms. I've selected year, month and date normally. OK. Oops, and I've done the wrong one there, haven't I? Let's go back. Settings. Oh. Getting confused, and I thought I understood this thing there. See, the date has already gone wrong there, perhaps because I pressed the wrong button again. You've got to be so careful. Now then, let's turn that to 14 at least. Go through it all. You imagine you're setting each one of those every time to the correct value. It could take some time. Right. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, I went. That's all. Oh dear. Right, how do I get this back to what I want? I want it to go over there. Is that it? Oh, that would do it. Okay, so that's like a, a, a reset button. So I say, okay. Now it's gone over there. Can I accept that? No, oh, that's very annoying. Oh dear. Currently I can't get it to accept that, can I? Press OK. Nope. Oh well. We'll carry on. Next thing is language. If you select that you can choose hundreds of different, well not hundreds, but 20 different languages. English of course is the one we want. Down here. Video out. Now this is a peculiar thing because they, they supply you with a little plug which uh, will plug in, it's a small jack plug, it'll plug in there, it's about a three inch long lead, and they say you can put that into your TV to watch the card. But I mean, if this is in your car, how on earth are you going to be able to operate this to see your TV? That doesn't make any sense at all, certainly not with a three inch lead. Um, information. That's of some use. That shows that the card in here um, has got 1.3, 1.43 gigabytes of space. The total capacity is 14.92 gigabytes. 
These are normal files that I've recorded in driving the car. And the last two items are information you need when you're setting up the Wi-Fi, which I'm not going to bother with today. And format card, if you select that, it'll wipe everything off the card, which you don't want to do. And that's upgrading the firmware. That's the software that the whole thing runs from, which you're going to have to download from the internet. And I'm certainly not getting involved with that. And I'd better not press OK. <laughs> and restore defaults. Again, if you press OK, it'll take it back to factory condition. There's also another little pinhole there. If you plug a pin in, that will also do it at any time. Again, I'm not going to do that, so I want to get back to normal. There we are, back in the normal recording the mode. Wi-Fi. This one is a playback button. Let's press that. You, go, you must always start in the recording mode, which is different to most camcorders. Right. There you can see either your video files, so it's like that. And there they are all dated. I've been taking a few recordings here, but the third one down you see has got the wrong date. In fact, most will have the wrong date because although it's been set in in the car, it goes wrong when the uh, battery little capacitor uh, maintaining the clock fails and it folds, fails very quickly within a day or two. But you can select which particular one you want to do. Um, got the sensible files here. It's 133 as you can see, so it'll take a while to look at them all. Oh, there's, there's a rubbing along file. As you can see, the quality is quite, quite acceptable, certainly when seen indoors in subdued lighting. It can be so variable in the car, because another thing you've got to bear in mind is misting on the windscreen will obscure the view that the camera's got. So you must always be aware that uh, the camera needs a clean screen, screen to look out of. There's the elapsed time of that original one minute lasting file. Yeah, I'm uploading this file because I think it's adding a bit of useful information to the already good um, information on YouTube. And it certainly clarified my mind as to how, thing, how everything is working. Right, once you've had enough of that one, you see you can just reset. Oh, by it's not a touch screen, by the way, by pressing the appropriate button below there. And that will come out of playback mode. This is a you could select the protected files here. And there aren't any because I've deleted them all. That was the other question I had, really. I ended up with about 15 protected files. And I don't know how they became protected, I certainly didn't intend them to be. And I wanted their file space to be available as normal files. And the way you, if you've got several there, you, you remove them by deleting them. Um, that's good. I don't think this facility is there. It's probably only that facility I'm going to talk about. is only when you've got a protected file and you've got a little symbol here for um, like a rubbish bin on a computer to delete it. So I think if you've got no protected files, you never come across that situation. Okay, so let's come out of that. And there we are, back into recording. What I've been doing previously is playing them back by taking the memory card out of here and plugging it into a little card reader into the um, USB connector on the side of the computer. But again, if you look at that original um, YouTube video, which I must give you a record of in a minute, I'll turn this off. You've got to press and hold it, it won't turn off. There we go. Um, yeah, if you, if you look at that other video, um, which is a very good video, it does explain quite a few things, uh, but I think I've added a little bit of extra information. And one of the things you've got to realise too is the little book that, that comes with the camera. Turn that one for a minute. But it's quite small, 
and 90% of it is in a foreign language which you certainly don't need to get involved with so you've only got I think it's well, after the titles but half a dozen pages of information now it's very tiny there and I've had a, a problem in actually reading some of the text so eventually I managed to find the right place on the internet where I could download the full manual you'll find it in the book anyway well, I did have to rummage around a bit because it didn't always appear to be where I expected it and it claims in this book that there's a frequently asked questions place on the website and it took me ages to actually find that and get any information but I did find it in the end but if you download the whole manual it's a big thing like this and the words are good and clear mostly it's a repeat of that but with a lot more in-depth information I would certainly recommend this happens another trick too to remember is how you actually fit this it's got a little supply clip and I remembered that when I fitted it how it connected there but when I came to remove it the other day I was struggling quite considerably I couldn't I was pressing here hoping to get it to remove but the trick is to slide it to the left and not squeeze those wings in which is what I thought it was that's showing me where the power supply uh, from your cigarette lighter goes in yeah this there we are this is worth having anyway that's that silly little lead that is a video cable so called and I've not got any video connections which end up with a an OZ plug one of the plus points is it does come with its own memory card which is a significant length I've certainly been able to record a journey which lasted a good half an hour and I think it would probably double that before it starts to reuse the earlier files so how many pages is about 20 odd isn't it Thir just under 30 a lot of it's just theoretical things a little troubleshooting list at the back which um, did tell me about the fact that the time display would only last for up to four days which I certainly didn't realize when I purchased the unit it really needs its own power supply, a little battery in there. Um, okay, well it's worth downloading this manual. Um, what I've done, when you've got specific information which is uh, something you're trying to follow, I've reprinted out page 11 and put it on the opposite page so that when they say press this button you can work out which of the buttons it is. It's never very really clear because it, it, this gives you the impression that there's a whole row, there's six there's three rows of four buttons, but they're not. It's only the original four buttons which are available by selecting. Um, that, for example, is the normal recording selection. This is what the buttons do when you've pressed C to get into settings. And this is what the buttons do when you've pressed into playback. So whenever there's details about buttons to press, I'll put in a sideways copies of that otherwise it's um, single pages and the little red button on the side allows you to press that in a panic and it makes sure that those particular files if you've just had an accident are not recorded over anyway I think I've covered all I wanted to say now this is probably a longer video than I expected but I hope it's helpful at the beginning of this uh, file I've got my own notes as I work through things and uh, here is the title of the other helpful one I mean, there's several videos on YouTube about driving along with this camera which I have to explain how it worked how it works hopefully that's the one that you should really look at and perhaps some of the points that I have had to discover myself I picked up in this video